A 10-foot ladder leans against the side of a building with its base four feet from the wall. What angle to the nearest degree does the ladder make with the ground? Yes. Um, I just have a question. Yeah. Trig is the in trig is one outcome, and that single outcome is weighted more than either of the measurement outcomes. But I think together they may be weighted more than trig, if that makes sense. I think I can't remember. It's on the course outline. Like if you go to D2L and go to general information, on the first page of the course outline is the breakdown of the weighting of all of the different individual outcomes. Um, okay. So a 10-foot ladder leans against the side of the building, base four feet from the wall. What is the angle to the nearest degree? What angle to the nearest degree does the ladder make with the ground? All right, where would you start here? Drawing. Yes, drawing it, absolutely. So we've got a building, and I've noticed some of you guys are really good artists. I'm not so good of an artist, but I can draw fairly straight lines, so that's helpful. Here's my building. Here's a ladder. Okay, most buildings make 90 degree angles with the ground, so I think it's safe to assume that this one does too. Um, let's fill in some more information. What else do we know here? Yeah. The height of the ladder is 10 feet. Is it the height of the ladder? Yeah. Yeah, the, because the ladder itself. The yeah, the ladder itself is 10 feet. Yeah, okay, and then what else do we know? Yep. Yeah, so the base of the building and the ladder are four feet apart. Okay, and what are we trying to find here? Are we trying to find the height of the, where the ladder hits the ground, or hits the, the wall, rather? No, what are we trying to find? Yeah. The angle that the ladder makes with what? Ground, yes. But be, read that carefully, because I could ask you what angle the ladder makes with the wall, right? And then it would be this angle over there. Another way that I could phrase this is, what is the angle of elevation? of the ladder. Um, okay, so we want to know an angle. We got two sides, the triangle's right. Where do we go from here? What do we do next? Yeah. So we have to use okay. So, yeah, so you're almost a little bit ahead, right? And eventually, hopefully, most of you will be able to look at this and be like, it's cosine. But while you're getting used to it, if you need to break that down a little bit further, start by labeling sides, right? If we want this angle, then I'm going to label sides relative to that angle. So my longest side is the hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle. That one never changes. The opposite and adjacent depend on what uh, angle you're using in the triangle. If you're using this angle down here, the opposite side is like the wall of the building or the side of the building. So this is the opposite. And then the uh, length along the base is the adjacent, okay? If we looked at the angle at the top, then the angle of the, sorry, the opposite and adjacent side would swap, okay? So yeah, we do need cosine because we want an angle and the two sides that we know are adjacent and hypotenuse. And cosine is the trig ratio, if you want to write this, on your page that you don't have to keep flipping to your formula sheet or whatnot, then this is the ratio that uses adjacent and hypotenuse. So we're going to start out by writing that ratio out. And then we fill in what we know, right? So we don't know the angle in this case. So that will still just be theta. And the adjacent side is 4. The hypotenuse is 10. Okay. So if we know the trig ratio and we want the angle, how do we access that information? What button do we press on our calculator? Yeah. Well, uh, you want to get the inversion of uh, cosine. So 
yeah, cos inverse of 4 over 10. And by the way, you could also enter that as 0 0.4 if you want, right? You could change it into a decimal. I typically do that just because I'm lazy, and 0.4 is only two characters, and 4 divided by 10 is four characters, right? I wouldn't do that, though, if it was a non-terminating decimal, because I want my answer to be exact. So I'm just going to clear this out the way, and I'm going to go cos inverse of, you could do 4 over 10 or 0 0.4, if you know that 0 0.4 is equal to 4 over 10. And that is 66. Are we rounding? What are we rounding to? Nearest degree, 66 degrees. OK. Um, let's flip over. I'm going to get you guys to try some of these, but just from previous experience, I know that this first question can be a little confusing, so I just want to talk through this one, just the step, and then I'm going to get you guys to practice some of these yourself. OK. So Clyde River on Baffin Island, Nunavut, has a latitude of approximately 70 degrees. The diagram shows the side view of some solar panels. Determine whether this design for solar panels is the best for Clyde River. Justify your answer. Okay, so I'm not like super knowledgeable about all of this stuff, but I believe what that means is that if this is, what is it, Clyde River, and you look at the tangent line that that makes with the Earth. Tangent line is a line that touches a curve. Okay. Then this angle here is 70 degrees. Okay. Now, when you are setting up a solar panel, you want the sun to essentially be perpendicular to your solar panel because then it's going to capture the most amount of solar energy. So if the sun is over here, That looks like a flower. Apologies. You want this to hit your solar panel at a right angle. You want it to be perpendicular so that you can get the most amount of energy. Okay? So the question is, if this is how the solar panel has been set up, is this a good design? Okay? How could we answer that? We want our solar panel essentially to be parallel to this. Yeah. Well, first of all, you can say that I don't think that this would be a very good design and then we can prove it by writing. Um, so I'm curious as to, so I want a really short, like, what do we need to find here? Not a process, because we've done that a lot. What do we need to, def to find to determine if this is a good design? this guy. Yeah. If that's 70, it's a good design because they're parallel to one another. I'm curious as to why you think it's not a good design without just looking at the picture. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so that's a good point. My picture is different. Do you think that I took out a globe and figured out exactly where none of it was on the map? Did I take out a uh, protractor and see that that was 70 degrees? No. Did I, are these pictures drawn to scale necessarily? No. So you can never rely on a picture to prove or disprove something mathematically. You have to prove it. Okay, yeah, so you guys can go ahead and do this question, and then you can do these other two, and then we're going to start to talk about how do we determine side lengths in triangles using trigonometry. Okay, so I'll make this just a little smaller because I know some people don't have the notes, so you can see the first two questions, and then I'll scroll up in a little bit. Observer is sitting on a dock watching a float plane in Vancouver Harbor. At a certain plane, the, at a certain time rather, the plane is 300 meters above the water. 
430 meters from the observer. Determine the angle of elevation of the plane measured from the observer to the nearest degree. Okay, so we're going to start out by drawing this thing, and that's what I noticed you guys did. How many people are actually like drawing planes and people and stuff? Okay, cool. How many people are just drawing like a triangle? Okay, so I'm going to do both. I'm going to start with just the triangle. So the plane is like up here, right? The observer is down here. And the plane is 300 meters above the ground and 430 meters from the observer. Which side is 430 meters? Yeah, the hypotenuse, because it's the distance from the plane to the observer. It's not the horizontal distance. So this is 430. And we want to know the angle of elevation. That's this guy down here. And of course, if you're looking at the height of something, it's going to be perpendicular to the ground. OK, does that help? Yeah, do you guys think you can take it from here? Yeah, OK, so now I'm going to draw this with the actual things that are there. And I want to ask you a question. OK, so here's the plane. Actually, it's a float plane, so it would probably look a little different. Oh, well. Um, here's the water. Here's the dock. Here's the observer sitting on the dock. OK. And this is 300. And this is 430. OK. How is this picture kind of different than the last one? Yeah. It's not really a closed triangle. Right. So the observer is not sitting level to the ground if the observer is sitting on the dock, right? So actually, if we were to make this into a triangle, OK, the, this side of the triangle plus this little bit over here, which is the height of the observer off the ground, that together has to equal 300. Okay, so I don't know, if you're sitting on the dock, you're sitting, maybe let's suppose that this is 0 0.5 meters, half a meter if you're sitting on the dock. How much would this part of the triangle be then? If this piece is half a meter, yeah, right, this is 299.5. Whoops, I can't draw that, 299.5. Okay, so here's the question. Do we need to worry about this? No. Yes? Uh, you would have to worry about it because you're not changing the distance between the plane and the observer and, I guess, the... Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yeah, so your sort of argument, you, yes, you do have to uh, worry about it because this 430 stays the same, but now this height is different. Yeah, you said no. Okay, so you got the answer that was there. Yeah. Uh, the answers only differ by 0.1. Okay, yeah. So the, you checked the answer. You said the, the difference is 0.1. So here's the answer. It depends. It depends. Okay, because if you're looking at a plane that's 300 meters on, in the air and you consider your angle of elevation, if you're sitting on the ground versus basically lying level to the ground, the difference in that angle of elevation is negligible, OK? On the other hand, let's say I'm standing here, and I look at the angle of elevation to the corner, the top of the room right there, OK? Will my angle of elevation change if I lie on the ground? Yes, because the difference in height between me and the top of the room is relatively small. OK, so this is going to be a significant difference if I take my height into account, right? Whereas when you're looking at a plane that's really, really high in, in the air, the difference in height is so small that it pretty much doesn't make a difference. OK, so we'll talk more about this, I think, on Friday. I think we're going to do something in a little outdoor activity, bring a coat. Um, and we'll, we'll get more into that, OK? But it's kind of an interesting 
thing to think about. Okay. Um, all right. We are going to talk about, for the rest of class, how to figure out a side length. Because we've talked a lot about how to use trig to figure out angles. Now we want to know how do we figure out a side length. Okay. So in right triangle, PQR, angle Q equals 90 degrees, angle P equals 34.5 degrees, and PQ equals 46.1 centimeters. Determine the length of RQ to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Where do we start? What do you think would be a good thing to do? Draw this thing. Yeah. So it is a right triangle. Okay. Which letter is the right angle? Q. That's pretty important. Um, the other ones, it really doesn't matter. You could put P at the top, you could P put P at the bottom. Um, one thing that I try to think about, though, when I'm doing this is P, there's two other angles, P and R. One of them is bigger than the other, right? Which angle is bigger, P or R? R, yeah, because together they have to add up to 90, and P is 30 points, 30 odd degrees, right? So the other one's going to be bigger. I personally like to label this P. If you label, if you swapped them, it wouldn't make a difference, except that when you, if you were to calculate side lengths, when you do your calculations, this side, PQ, should be longer than this one. And sometimes when you swap the angles, when I've seen people swap the angles, and they get side lengths that where the longer one is actually the shorter one, they get kind of confused and second guess themselves. Okay, so it doesn't really make a difference, but you can go ahead and do, you know, that's my personal strategy. Yep. Well, the, the, here's what you need to know about, about triangles. Um, largest sides are, large, are opposite largest angles. Smallest sides are opposite smallest angles, right? So if you have small, medium, large, then your angles, small side, small angle, medium side, medium angle, large angle, large side, right? So there's correspondence there. Yeah, so just to sort of set yourself up for success, um, I suggest you just take a moment to think about that because sometimes you will get a diagram that's mathematically correct but looks visually off. And then people are like, I think I did something wrong, right? Um, okay, so here we go. This is 46.1. What do we want to determine here? Oh, also angle P, that's 34.5. And what do we want to know? RQ, that's this guy. I'm going to call that X. Just that I don't have to use RQ all the time, I can use the variable X. Okay? All right, so when we were trying to figure out angles, what did we do first? Yeah. So we have two, so subtract uh, 90 and 34.5. Okay, you could go ahead and find this third angle. Is that what we're looking for, though? No. But what was the first step yesterday when we were trying to figure out an unknown angle. Because when you're figuring out unknown sides, the process is exactly the same. What did we do first with our triangle? Yeah. Mm, before that, even before that, yeah. Label it. Because we have to figure out, based on the labels, which trig ratio we need to choose, right? So this is the hypotenuse. Which angle do you think that I should use to label my sides. Okay, I'm not there yet. Yep. You, yeah, so here's the, and this is actually getting back to your point. In this case, you actually could use either because we have enough information to get angle R as well. 
So if you'd prefer to use angle R, you can go 180, minus 90, minus 34.5, then use angle R to label your sides. Personally, I just usually use the one that I'm given because I'm lazy. And that's usually what most people do as well. Okay, so I'm going to use that one, but again, we do have the ability here to use angle R as well. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse. Side X is the opposite side because it's across from the angle. And then the 46.1 is the adjacent side. Okay, so we are looking at picking a trig ratio now. Now, here's the key. When you're looking for a side, the unknown is going to change. When we looked for angles, the unknown was the angle. We had to know two sides. When you're looking for a side, well, then you're, one of the sides is going to be the unknown. So you must know the angle as well, because that's the second one that you know. You have to know two out of three. Okay? So when you're picking your trig ratio, you have to pick one that includes the side you want. So if we want the opposite side, we have to pick either sine or tan. We can't pick cosine because cosine isn't going to give us the opposite side. Okay? And then to narrow it down further, we have to remember we have to know one of the other two sides. Which is the side that we know? Adjacent. Yeah. So you've got to pick the trig ratio that includes the side that you want and the side that you know. And that, in this case, is the tan ratio. Right? We want the opposite, we know the adjacent. So uh, now we're going to write that out and fill in what we know. Uh, opposite over adjacent. And then now we know the angle, so we're going to put in the tan of 34.5 equals opposite is x, we don't know that, adjacent is 46.1. Okay. Now, the value of tan 34.5 is a number that's stored in your calculator. It's basically for a triangle uh, where that angle of elevation is 34.5. What is the ratio of the opposite to the, hypo uh, to the adjacent, rather? Okay? So we can look this up, essentially, by punching in tan of 34.5. We're going to get a decimal value. Okay? And actually, I'll look it up in my book. Right? So where are my tangent? There's the tangents. And it is 34, I don't know how to read this part. They don't have like decimals here. 34, it's about six, somewhere around 0 0.68, 0 0.69. Is that right? All right, cool. Um, so uh, what I prefer to do is instead of putting that as a decimal, I prefer to focus on solving the equation and then do all that calculator work at the end. This is a number. This is my unknown. I'm dividing it by 46.1. How do I undo that? Multiply by 46.1? Yeah, multiply both sides by 46.1. These cancel. And x equals 46.1 times tan 34.5. So I can do all of that on my calculator at once. And that is to the nearest tenth, 31.7 centimeters. Okay? Some people really like to get this as a decimal first and then use that in their equation instead. Um, but just because rounding is, can be an issue, right? And if you turn this into a decimal first, you're going to be rounding more than once. Um, I encourage people, what was it, 61.7? Uh, to round at the very end, okay? I will say, actually, uh, those measurement tests that you guys did, there were lots and lots of people who got anywhere from one to four out of four numeric resp response questions wrong because of rounding. And that was their only mistake. Okay, that's a significant piece. Okay. So this is 61.7. By the way, here's another thing that I just want to mention. Let's say I asked you to also find the hypotenuse. I said I want all three sides. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll do that in a sec. Yeah, you could, uh, no, it's 31.7. 
How did I get 61.7? I wrote the wrong thing down. Does that help? <laughs> OK. Good. Thank you. Um, OK. So um, yeah, you could use the Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuse. You could also just do this whole thing over again and use a different trig ratio, right? Here's what I want to mention about if you find the hypotenuse as well, OK? If you find the hypotenuse using this side, and you use a Pythagorean theorem, then this 31.7 is actually a final answer and an intermediate step at the same time. It's a final answer to what is the opposite side, and then it's an intermediate step in finding the hypotenuse. Okay, so what does that mean about rounding? It means that in that intermediate step, you actually have to keep extra decimal places, right? So if you were using this value to find the hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem, you have to go back into your calculator and Make sure to write down, jot down some extra decimal places and don't round uh, that hypotenuse until the end. Yeah? Um, on the TI specifically, you can, um, you can just you can round it uh, and then in a later step, you can just use the Yes. Yeah. You can use your answer. And, yeah. And in some of the newer models, I believe you can go up to previous answers and like copy and paste. Yeah. That's a really good strategy, too. I use that all the time. OK, so let's do a couple more. Determine the length of BC to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. OK, so we're going to start out exactly the same way. Um, here's our angle. If you wanted to use angle A, that one's pretty easy because like these two have to add up to 90, so angle A has to be 40, right? So you could use angle A as well. Um, I'm not going to do that because that's usually what most people most people just use the angle that's written in there. Um, we know this side, we want BC. I'll label that X. Okay, so we're going to start by labeling our sides. Here's my right angle. This 5.2 is the hypotenuse. Okay, um, the side across from 50 is the opposite, and this side is the adjacent. Okay, and I want the adjacent side. What trig ratio is going to work? I want adjacent. Which one do I know? Cosine. Because I want the adjacent and I know the hypotenuse. Adjacent and the hypotenuse is cosine. Uh, there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to fill in what I know. So I know the angle is 50 degrees, and adjacent is x, hypotenuse is 5.2. Okay, how do I solve for x? Yep. Right, multiply both sides by 5.2. Okay, and then in my calculator, uh, 5.2 times the cosine of 50 degrees, 3.3, 3.3 centimeters. Okay. Um, all right. One more for the day, and then I'm going to get you guys to try some yourself, um, and that'll be it. Determine the length of DE to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Okay, so DE, we want this guy. I'm going to label that X. Okay, and I'll use this angle, and so now I can label my sides accordingly. Here is my right angle, so this guy, x, is the hypotenuse, okay? And then across from my 55 degrees is 6.8, so this is the opposite side. It's opposite that angle, and this is the adjacent side. All right. Which trig ratio will work here? Yeah. Correct, sine, right? Um, I want the hypotenuse. I know the opposite. Opposite and hypotenuse is the sine ratio. 
Um, so I got to use sine. Okay, and I'll fill in what I know. Sine of 55 degrees equals 6.8 over x. <laughs> okay, as long as that calculator is okay, I'm happy. Um, all right. Uh, so this question is slightly different than the other two we solved because the variable is in the denominator. That's not very nice. We're dividing the right side by x. If we want that out of the denominator, what do we need to do? We have to undo that division by x. Yeah. Hmm? Yep. You multiply both sides by x. Yes, absolutely. So multiply by x, multiply by x. This is gone. Okay, now what we have is x times the sine of 55 equals 6.8. Okay, well now how do I isolate x? Yeah. Not by x. What am I doing to x? Multiplying by sine. sine of 55, yep. I was just going to say, you divide by sine 55. Right, divide by sine 55. Remember, sine 55 is just a decimal number that is stored in the memory of your calculator. And you end up with 6.8 divided by sine 55. is 8.3, okay, 8.3 centimeters. Now, this scenario where the variable is in the denominator happens roughly half the time because the unknown could either be in the numerator or it could be in the denominator. There's a 50-50 chance it's going to be in the denominator, okay? So solving this kind of problem comes up quite a bit. Um, some people like to remember, sorry, remember like a gimmick for this. So I'll show you the gimmick, but you have to either remember it or understand how to derive it. I'm not going to show it to you again, because if I show it to you again, what that means is that you won't remember the gimmick, right? So you have to have an understanding. So here's what some people like to do. Um, the equation started like this, sine of 55 equals 6.8 over x. And it ended like this, x equals 6.8 over sine of 55. Okay, so what happened? These swapped. Okay, so you can use that, but you have to use it consistently correctly. I'm almost hesitant to show people this because they try and rely on just memorizing to be able to do math and it will not work that way, right? And when you start solving harder problems where a variable is in the denominator, like in math 20-1 or 30-2, this won't work, right? So I'll be honest, I do this all the time just because it's the most efficient for me and I always do it correctly and I know how to, like if I didn't, if I wasn't able to, I'd know how to figure it out, right? You have to kind of be in that position if you're going to do this kind of thing too. All right? Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to get you guys to finish these three questions. And that is it for today. So you guys can start working on your homework after that.